brothers and sisters, and welcome to Family Home Evening with Bad Mormons. You're here listening to our podcast because you love listening to Charlotte and I talk about all the stupid shit we've done. Yeah, lots and lots of drunken, blacked out fun times that I don't remember. (laughs) And, you know, sometimes we're drinking, sometimes we're on drugs, and sometimes we're just fucking idiots. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've done a lot of stupid shit sober, too. (laughs) So, welcome to Family Home Evening, uh, and cheers to the end of 2020. Cheers. It's officially 2021. Bye, 2020. Tart. <laughs> I made us a, a cocktail. We didn't do a podcast last week because, as well, you may or may not know, we got the fucking coronavirus. Thanks. And we just weren't feeling it. So we haven't been drinking. We've just been mm-hmm. laying around watching TV. I only just got my flavor buds back. Yeah. And so I made us a, a lemon drop cocktail with Chambord to make it raspberry and a little Lee Moy on the rim. I wonder if I can only taste the lemon and I can't taste the subtler sweetness and that's why it's so tart. Maybe. Um, If you want to go grab the bottle of Chambord and put a little more in there, it'll sweeten it. No, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just trying to figure out my taste buds because it's all sorts of weirdness in there. Yeah. I tried to eat when I, when my taste buds were coming back. So uh, you're like a couple of days behind me in symptoms. Mm -hmm. When my taste buds were coming back, lemon was not a, like lemon tasted weird and off. Right. I put, I heated up some fried rice, leftover fried rice, and I put a bunch of sriracha on it thinking that I wouldn't be able to taste it. And it would just clear out my sinuses or whatever. Mm -hmm. I could taste the sriracha, but nothing else. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good sign. You're on your way to recovery. Yes. (laughs) Because you know what I love is food. And when I can't taste it, it's really sad. Yeah. Fucking for real. My favorite part of Christmas is, so at work we do this thing where a bunch of cheese goes on sale and I buy a cheese and I collect them all for the, um, you know, Christmas charcuterie board. And Christmas rolled around and I'm fucking sick and I can't eat it. I can't taste anything. So it's like I have all this delicious gourmet <laughs> charcuterie stuff and it's just still sitting in the fridge. Because, okay, we'll eat it next week when yeah. my taste buds are fully back into effect. That's true. That's also the reason I didn't open a bottle of wine tonight because I don't want to waste it on potentially like weird taste bud That's situation. True. I don't want to open any of those bottles because I want to know what they taste like for real, not coronavirus taste. Right. Ugh, what a waste. So we're drinking booze instead. Huzzah! Our first cocktail of the year. Well, I guess we kind of drank a cocktail on New Year's Eve, but not yeah. really. I, You know, I'd say I felt slightly hungover the next day, but it was because I'm dehydrated, not necessarily that I got drunk and... A yeah. hangover. Um, this is a fun fact, listeners. Uh, our mother gave, gave <laughs> us a video message the next day. Our whole family's on a video chat app. And uh, our mother gets on early in the morning. And I don't even think anybody had left any messages. Maybe two people had left messages. Right. And she gets on there and she's like, I'm vivacious and fresh and I'm not hung over because I got plenty of sleep. And that's why all of you guys look terrible or whatever. Right. <laughs> Essentially, it's like, never mind the fact that of coronavirus. Yeah. But me sure. and Charlotte are like, uh, we're, we're fucking sick. And wow. Right. <laughs> Rude I just, woman. I was, I was going to respond back with something equally hateful. But then I was like, you know, she wants she wants to get a response out of me. I'm not giving her the satisfaction. Yeah, <laughs> she's on some kind of a fucking kick want, trying to argue. It's because... She must be bored. She's she's bored, and she's probably upset that her boyfriend Trump didn't get reelected, <laughs> and she's inundated with Alex Jones probably twenty four hours a day. Did we ever tell you that we <laughs> we went out to go see her once, and Mandy shows me her toothpaste, and she has Alex Jones toothpaste, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? It says Infowars on it. And at this point, she tried saying that she no longer, like, supported Trump and that she had seen the light and that he was a con man and that he was a liar and yada yada. And, you know, she had the Alex Jones stuff just because she gave some bullshit excuse. Like, oh, I was just on sale. And it's like, "Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. You have to go to his website. Click a link in his. Yeah. (laughs) There's no, there's no, there's no way that's just on sale. Right. It's just like, God fine, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. But yeah. So anyways, you know, she'd be crazy. 
Yeah, I was actually kind of thinking, um, I was on my way to work today on the freeway, and one of those big, like, America, Eagle, gun truck, freedom trucks, you know, I was, like, <laughs> swerving in and out of traffic, just being a fucking asshole in general, like they do. Right. And I just started on to this, like, train of thought that lasted me throughout most of my shift and sent me down a long, terrifying internet rabbit hole. <laughs> but basically, I was thinking... I was like, God, it reminds me of those, like, ISIS people with their big, you know, like the the radicalist ISIS, you know, terrorist people over in the Middle East with their big flags and their, right. you know, and I was like, the mentality just seems to me to be the same. And so I started thinking about that and I couldn't shake that thought. And so I started kind of Googling it. And I guess there was a, an NPR contributor on Twitter. I forget her name. Um but she she basically, like, made the comparison, and she showed um, one of the big famous, like, Florida, the long line of, of giant trucks with all right. the big Trump flags, and then the exact same scene in the Middle East with the ISIS flags, and she's like, see the difference? Neither do I. And I was like, oh, shit. And then it, pretty much every article that was citing that was, like, a, a super conservative right wing, like, this is bullshit, you know, like, which I understand, right? Like, Nobody just because you're be a Republican, you don't want to be... Right, but also don't have a big ISIS. truck that was trying to make it so people couldn't vote or run off the Biden uh, van, not like that tour bus. Yeah. Like, they, again, don't act that way. We won't lump you into it, but right, you well, also and the, and need the, to condone it, too. Like, or you, you need to condemn. Condemn, thank you. I was like, not condone it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I started thinking about that, and then I was like, I was like, basically, like started doing a little bit of research because it, this is embarrassing to admit, but I didn't really. Un so, like, I understand that like uh, anti-Semitism is like a huge part of pretty much any radical lib or le radical conservative movement in history, and I didn't really understand. I don't really understand why. Like, right. why are Jews so bad? Why does everybody, you know, hate Jews? And then I was like, am I allowed to say Jew <laughs> or do I have to say Jewish people? <laughs> Anyways, this is this is the Internet that I was on today all day. Right. Turns out, yes, you can call them Jews. They are Jews. Right. Is it genetic? Is it biological? Is it religion? Turns out it's all. It's very there's a lot of, you know, a lot that goes into um, the topic, basically. But but kind of what it boils down to and why um, why people are kind of lumping them together and Truly, like, if you think about, um, you know, ISIS uh, and, and Muslim, like, terrorist organizations, they're big, the big, like, cry for war is a jihad. Right. Which technically uh, translates to be a struggle, which Ooh. is exactly what the idea behind Mein Kampf was, the whole mm. Hitler thing. And so it's basically these groups of, of conservative people who've taken this, this um, victimhood and, you know, they're being persecuted and so they're... Trying to take my guns. Or, or that's what they're yeah. doing to, like, propagate and put the propaganda out to get people to follow them. Right. And so that's what, like, I'm sorry to say it, but, like, less intelligent and uneducated people really fall for that shit. Right. And so that's the... I feel like that's the parallel between all these conservative... And you don't you don't see that with, like, liberal, you know... Um, People who care about society as a right. whole in general. You, yeah, you see this it, with conservatives. If you're like, seeing it on the other end of liberals, or it might be that they they look down on other people, and that that can be its own other problem. Like we just watched The Hunt, right? Which was a great movie about these liberals who rounded up some a bunch of rednecks, a bunch of rednecks, and started killing them, right? But it showed you two very different things. You have your elitist liberals who think that they're smarter and better than everybody else, and then you had these redneck assholes who believed in conspiracy theories and kept spreading lies and, and bullshit, right? So it's like, oh, you have extremes on both sides, but most liberal people who do think they're more intelligent than other people, they're not taking away the rights of other people ever. Right. Whereas these less, these people who are having their trucks with their big flags are trying to, t you know, take away the rights of like LGBTQ or, you know, people of color, you know, trying to the whole, um, take away their right to vote essentially. Like they're making, there's a word, sorry, the whole COVID fog brain thing is actually a thing I've read up a lot of it. So stringing together sentences is sometimes hard, um, which, which isn't great for a podcast. Um, but anyways, they, um, I forgot where well, I was going with this. Let me, let me jump in there. Cause kind of what I was also trying to get at was like part of the, part of the radicalization of the group. So that's what they do, right? They radicalize people. So they get them to like 
to view their views, which are extreme. Right. Um, and but it, it leads to to violence, and that's the difference. Is that's when you get people being beheaded for show, right. or that's when you get people being like white. You know, sorry, it's almost always white people right. mass shooting. You know, oh, right. it always leads to violence, and that's the difference between voter suppression. Was what I was trying to think of. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically, like they have these radicalized beliefs that um, lead to violence, and they're advocating extreme radical measures. Right, like Steve Bannon was just saying that he thinks that Fauci and Biden need to have their heads on spikes in public because, exactly. and it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And the people who are agreeing with it, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, and that's the thing too is like we see people who are considered left or liberal we see that shit we see like i see that all the time that's all over my twitter feed all this violence from these like redneck trump loving gun toting you know asshole motherfuckers and you see them swerving up and down the freeway when you're trying to go to work you know and that's the kind of thing that we see but i mean that's I know, I'm smart enough to know that that's like a very small percentage of right. Republican people. They're just and louder than everybody else. Exactly. Like, we can't lump them all together, but in case Republican people are wondering why they're getting grouped in with those people, that's fucking why. They don't see that. Because right. you're not going to see that on Alex Jones. You're not going to see that on Fox News. Right. You're not going to see that in your Facebook feed because your Facebook feed is tailored to give you what you want to hear. Right. And it's not that. So... Anyways, this is not a political podcast, believe it or not, but we always, without fucking fail, before we even get into our format, we just start going off on politics. Well, it, it's not our fault. It's literally you wake up and it's damage report. What happened today? And yeah. it's been that way for the last four years. I was, I don't know if I had said this before, but I was, when it was uh, the night of the election, and of course nothing had gotten called for almost a week, but like... They had that fucking Rick Santorum on CNN. He's like the devil's advocate that they keep on a panel, which I appreciate because they always like to hear the justification of the other side. Um, but he was trying to say to Don Lemon, I think, and he was like, if you think that people wake up every day and check on the news to see what Trump said or did, you're fooling yourself. Nobody cares. People just wake up and do their jobs. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Every day I'd wake up and be like, what did that motherfucker do this And time? everybody I know does the same exactly. thing. Exactly. So for conservatives to think that people aren't watching or don't care, they're fucking fooling themselves because it was a struggle. Like, again, I think we had talked about it. Until they actually really called Biden to win it, I slept so good that night. I didn't even realize how bad I was sleeping. Right. Because it's not something that you just think, you're like, oh, I'm not sleeping well. It's because the state of our politics. But sure as shit, as soon as I, like, I knew it was over and he was done, I slept so good that night. Well, then, you know, the next day, then he starts fighting it. But I had right. one day of peace. Right. <laughs> well, this whole kind of, like, rabbit hole that I went into and this whole, like, cycle of thought that I've been on all fucking day, which, I mean, led me down some fucking, I, go I was Googling, like, eugenics and, like, just all kinds of fucking crazy shit. But basically, it, it did kind of come full circle because essentially what I was able to see and what I was able to read, it's really right-wing conservative people, not just in this country, you know, there's, there are right-wing conservative people in every country. Right. And those people, it all stems from fucking religion. Right. When it really boils down to it, like, I was, like, Googling, like, why... What is anti-Semitism? Why do we hate Jews? Like, why do people hate Jews? What's the... Why I don't do understand. people hate Jewish people? Well, ter well, it turns out from what I could tell, they were like, Jewish people had more money than them. They had kind of a lofty, haughty sense of like holier than thouness. They would only intermarry with other Jewish people. Right. Um, you know, and so basically that, you know, the, the poorer people or the people with different religious views started fighting each other. It turns out, actually, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, this may surprise you. It surprised me. They all worship the same fucking God. Right. All of them. They just have different perspectives on how that should look. And that's what's causing all of the strife, all of the wars, all of this shit. Fucking Hitler. Any kind of synagogue bombings, any kind right. of mass murder. Like, it all boils down to religion. So... It is kind of irrelevant to our podcast because um, my, new, is bullshit. <laughs> my new hashtag is religion is bullshit and religion is evil and religion fucking is the 
one of the biggest causes of a lot of the problems in the world, in my opinion. No, it absolutely is. Nobody nobody goes in and, kill, what is it, the uh, Crusades, right? That was all for religious mm-hmm. shit. Like, how many people had to die in the name of a god that doesn't exist? Well, you know, all of this least... goes back to the same thing, yeah. Right. That's and part just... of it. At that that time I did acid when I was 15 and I was just like, oh my God, God is a lie. Well, at least you didn't end up like the Heaven's Gate people. They took acid and that shit went into a dark place too. I, is that how they started their religion was from, from LSD? It's or? gotta be. Yeah. They're well, <laughs> to get on a comet. Oh my God. There's a... Uh, so there's a, I think it's, I can't remember what I watched it on. So it's we've HBO. been out of work for a while. Oh yeah, you're right, HBO. So we've been binge watching a lot of shit. Normally we have a little segment where we talk about what we're watching, but there's so much that I don't even know if we should get into it because this podcast <laughs> well, we pretty much on. already have for two hours. Uh, but I watched the Heaven's Gate cult uh, right. documentary. And in the, within the first 10 minutes of the first episode, I was like, oh, those motherfuckers took acid. That's how this all started. And then there's like something a, a couple episodes into it later on where this person who'd been following them for years and years since the 70s was like, oh, yeah, they took acid. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was like, how else could you come up with that kind of fucking crazy shit? But the fact that it sustained them for 20 plus years That's before crazy. they all ended up committing suicide was... I don't know. I've done a lot of drugs. I never once thought that I should get on a comet. I don't also don't know the religion that well. I have not watched that. You should yet. watch it because it's like it's like, oh wow. A little bit of it's like I don't think it started out as kind of mind control and controlling people, but it ended up that way and there was one point where he was Because like religions suggesting... always turn evil. Exactly. Like that whole fucking um what was the thing I watched that was a cult? It was that The Vow. The Vow, right, with uh, the Nexium people. The Nexium people. Where it turned out like, hey, let's just make you a better version of yourself using science and different, you know, meditation and blah blah blah. Oh, turns out I'm gonna brand you and mm-hmm. have you be my sex slave. Well, I think cool. it kind of evolves into that. At least that's what it seemed like with that. That's what it seems like with the Heaven's Gate people. It's like the people who are running the show get a little taste of how much control Power. they have over people and it just evolves into evil shit like this heaven's gate thing there was like a point where they were like yeah let's let's castrate ourselves because being asexual is part of it that's why everybody has the same haircut and they don't want to be feminine or masculine they want to be very Ooh. asexual so like a couple people were volunteering to be first to be castrated and they were castrating each other well they only did the one guy because it went bad right <laughs> and uh he almost died and they eventually like had to take him to a hospital and fess up to what they were doing but yeah <laughs> It doesn't sound like mom would be part of that. Religion, <laughs> cults, it's all fucking weird. Why don't you even think about priests? They take advantage of their positions of powers when it comes to little kids. Mm-hmm. Like, same thing with the Mormons. You know how many, I don't know if you've been getting this in your Facebook feed. I have been getting a lot of sponsored ads from, um, were you sexually abused from the LDS church? Yeah, me too. It's like, sign up here to be part of a class action lawsuit. I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah crazy anyway yeah that's so that's our new hashtag (laughs) i'm gonna put it in on all the posts yeah religion is bullshit and religion is evil oh yeah yeah yeah. so uh, yeah do we moving on do we have anything to repent for i think you do what did i do you got me sick (laughs) uh that is questionable you could have also gotten me sick although i probably got you sick um, I don't leave the house. Okay, I'm sorry that I have to talk to anti-maskers all day, and they could they get up and yell in my face about how they have freedoms, and they blow coronavirus in my face. I know. I'm not saying it's entirely your I'm fault. I'm sorry. It's my fault for watching Ghostbusters in your bedroom that one time. <laughs> nah, you would have gotten it anyway. That's true. Um, um, but no, I can't think of anything else to repent for... Well, I'm going to move on and talk about some cool shit, even though cause we uh, we talked about this. We, we tried to record this a second ago and we scrapped it because I it wasn't tired. going well. Because <laughs> Charlotte wasn't dancing like the monkey we want her to so be. I'm sorry. We want you to entertain us, Charlotte. I'm tired. <laughs> Drink your cocktail. Mm, you have a headache. Aw. Okay, well, we'll cut this one short. Oh, no, it's going to... Headache's not going anywhere anyways. Oh. It's fine. I'm sorry. 
Oh, this is a bummer podcast now. No, it's not. It's, I'm having the best time. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I was going to say as far as cool shit goes, uh, I watched his Dark Materials, which I loved. We watched The Watchmen, which was really hard to get any answers of <laughs> until the last couple episodes. And we're way late on the game, uh, way late to the game on that one. And um, if you guys aren't following Leslie Jordan on Instagram. I love him so much. He is a motherfucking national treasure. And he is a national treasure. Probably my favorite. I'm going to go out there and say my favorite Instagram account. And by following him and loving him so much. Oh, now I can't think of it. Matt McDermott. Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. I'm in love with him, too, because Leslie Jones is in love with him. Jordan. Leslie Jordan. What did I say? Leslie Jones. Oh. No, that's a chick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who Leslie Jones is. She's that SNL chick. Um, anyways, because I love him. He he pro- proclaimed himself as Dylan McDermott's number one fan. And so Dylan McDermott comments on his stuff a lot. And I'm nice. Like, I love him, too. <laughs> I'll just follow him, too. So, um... It- we listeners, we're all over the place. Sorry, we're <laughs> gonna blame coronavirus. It's but we have this um, format that we like to go through, and now is the point where we talk about current events. <laughs> 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 so I say we skip that since we've already done it, and let's uh, just go. Jump I'll just right laugh in. at the fact that Trump tried to stronghold the Georgia strong arm. Strong arm. Thank you. What's his face? Somebody. Somebody in Georgia. He tried to bully him into recounting the votes in his favor and pretty much says, this is what I'm going to need. He said the exact number. He's like, I need 11,780 votes to be changed, essentially. <laughs> and it's like, wow. Let's all Google it. And then next week we'll come back and talk about it when we know what saying, we're talking about. And so people know what. Time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're telling our listeners, Google it. Then well, next week's episode, we'll all be able to be on the same page. <laughs> well, by then, hopefully, he'll be in jail. <laughs> oh, God, wouldn't that be nice? Right. All right. Let's hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll come back and we'll tell some stories about the time that we did stupid shit. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Did someone misrepresent the effectiveness of a certain spray-on hair replacement product resulting in the side of your face looking like a skid mark on a freshly laundered pair of tidy whiteies? Did you ingest so much hydroxychloroquine that it has left you with little baby hands with sausage fingers and an inability to accept that you are a huge loser in all aspects of life? Has a recently published photo of you with a former KKK leader and convicted felon expose you for the racist, stupid twat you really are? We're here to help. In these trying times, you'll need an attorney who will stick by you like a fly on a turd or vice president's head. Over the past four years, the law offices of Pudolf Duduliani have helped our clients recover hundreds of dollars in well-deserved compensation for the wrongs inflicted on them. We are committed to fighting for your delusions and lost causes. Who do do here for you? Rude. (laughs) I'm not editing this. That's rude. (laughs) And we're back. (laughs) Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that word from our executive... Wait, damn it. Executive. ECGD. <laughs> Executive Genius Creative Director. Yes. <laughs> she puts a lot of hard work into those and we mix them up for you. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so, let's, story let's time. Tell a story. Did you think of a good story to tell this week? No, but you said you had a good one. So I figured I'd just piggyback on that. <laughs> <laughs> Were you even alive when this story took place? It was 2001. <laughs> no, I was in the womb still. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to tell you the story. Actually, I don't even know if you've heard this story. So. I don't think I have, which is why I didn't know what story that I would tell in conjunction to it. Okay. Well, so here's here's a story. Picture it. <laughs> it's 2001. It's 2001. I'm living in the quaint, quintessential Pacific Northwest town of Bellingham, Washington, with uh, my sisters and Courtney and my boyfriend at the time. 
and we lived in a historical house on Utter Street with a little plaque on it that said, you know, established in whatever year. We've talked about this house before on the podcast. Anyway, so uh, the... Did you ever go to the Gorge down in... No. So the Gorge is a, an amphitheater down in southern Washington, right on the border of Oregon. The, basically, the Columbia River um, is right there in the background. I'll post a picture of it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But it's this amazing outdoor amphitheater, and we would always go down there to see shows. Um, that's actually the first place I ever saw the Alkaline Trio mm -hmm. was on a side stage at the Warp Tour down at the Gorge. That's a, That was in... Actually, that was probably not that long before that. That was probably in 2000, so that was probably the year before... <laughs> Anyways, this isn't a podcast about Matt Skiba, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so Radiohead was playing at the Gorge, and we really wanted to go. Actually, I wasn't even that big of a fan of Radiohead um, until after I saw that show. And I was like, oh, damn. Do you know what album it was? It was OK, uh, Computer. OK Computer. Yeah, and that's, a, that's probably their best album. Yeah, it was fucking amazing. And so me and um, BJ, who was my boyfriend at the time, and our friends Dave and Mike, who were a couple of brothers, and like... Super fun party people to hang out with. And then um, our friend Anestin and uh, a bunch of Boundary Bay people, which I actually had to text BJ because I was like, do you remember? I was like, this is going to be totally random. I haven't talked to you for like a year, <laughs> but do you remember who was with us on that that Radiohead trip? And he was just like, oh my God, that was so fun. Anyways, it so basically <laughs> there was nine of us and we decided to rent an RV and go drive down to the gorge to see Radiohead. And so Boundary Bay, uh, if you guys don't know, Boundary Bay is a brewery in Bellingham. And it was a it was a brewery that we would hang out at and, like, a lot of people worked at long before, like, breweries became... Super popular. Yeah, on yeah. every fucking corner. That was, like, I think maybe one of two breweries in I Bellingham. I think it's the only brewery that was in Bellingham that I knew of. Yeah, it, it and it, they have really good beer. Um, there's some competition now, of course. Right. <laughs> but uh, so basically it was a bunch of the Boundary Bay Brewery people and then like our little group. Well, I think the crossover was, I think, B, I can't remember if BJ worked there or he knew people that worked there. Maybe a Neston worked there. But like I was kind of like co-op people. So I didn't know all the Boundary Bay people. Right. But like our sister Laurie worked there and our brother Richard worked there eventually and stuff. So um, but I didn't, I didn't really know the Boundary Bay people that came with us on this trip basically is what I'm trying to get at. But there were nine of us in this RV, and I was really sick. Like, I'd gotten, it was in June, and I'd gotten really sick with, like, I don't know, some kind of flu or something, like, the day before. But I was, I was, had been so looking Typical. forward to it. No, just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to miss it. And I, it didn't even occur to me that, like, I might get other people sick, which is crazy <laughs> to me now, because it's now every, like, sniffle, I'm like, oh my God, I'm contagious. I'm going to fucking murder my coworkers or whatever. <laughs> But at the time, I was just like, I, I was not going to miss it. So we get in this RV. And um, so the two brothers, Dave and Mike, uh, you may have remembered our friend Dave. We refer to him as Sexy Dave, Dave. usually. I thought I was going to ask. Yeah, Sexy Dave. <laughs> his brother, Mike. Uh, they So they're kind of like car heads. They know a lot about engines. You know, pretty much any, anything you could want to know about cars, they fucking know. Especially, I know especially Dave does. And so we're getting... We're, we get into this RV and uh, we're talking about like the the mileage of the thing. Like, oh, we only get so many miles a day. And I don't know how many miles it is down to the gorge, but it's like this entire state of Washington. So it's pretty far. And I start telling them the story of when I was in high school and I used to take dad's car because he would <laughs> let me drive it. But I wasn't allowed to drive it out of the valley. I don't know if we've I don't know yeah, if we've we talked about I think this. we've talked about it yeah. once. So I would reach up under the dashboard and unplug the odometer and the speedometer so like you couldn't tell how fast you were going but it also didn't rack up any miles right so i could drive wherever i wanted and uh so i was telling these guys i was like oh yeah i used to do this in high school too how we couldn't do this to an rv and they're like oh my god that's brilliant we could totally do that <laughs> and they crawled under there and did whatever they had to do i think it was like computerized and shit at this point but um yeah they totally disconnected that oh, whole nice. thing and we had basically free miles on that rv for that <laughs> whole entire trip so instead of just driving down the five freeway to the gorge and back we ended up um, going around through the North Cascades and nice. taking the long way back, which was so beautiful and fun. Um, but anyways, so back to the RV. So we're we're getting ready. We're all packed up, getting ready to go down to the gorge to see Radiohead. I feel like shit. I'm totally sick. 
Um, and they come to pick us up and we get into the RV, like we put, put our stuff in there and Dave and Mike are wearing pink sweaters and like strings of pearls and <laughs> wigs and like shawls and big sunglasses, yes. like old ladies. And they have a framed picture of their grandma in the RV, like above the little eating nook. I forget her name. Like, shit, I should have asked. Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. And so the, and these two guys were driving just like a bat out of fucking hell. <laughs> just like those Trump trucks I was talking about earlier. <laughs> That's these two like speeding in and out of traffic, driving like 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Um, and then like, so they just blow past people and like the people would be looking like who the fuck's driving this rv like crazy and then they would see what they thought was like two old ladies (laughs) so it was extra funny uh so that was a fucking riot and then so we get down to we get down to the gorge to see the concert i remember just laying on the grass with my eyes closed because that's how terrible i was feeling um and was just listening to the music and i was like oh this is fucking good <laughs> this is really good i'm so glad i didn't miss this and then um at the gorge for multiple day concerts they have a campground and so we had you know the rv parked in the campground and i don't remember a whole lot of it we did have a bunch of kegs of beer in there because you know boundary bay right <laughs> and it's strong beer it's not like you know we're not drinking like shit schmidt ice or whatever <laughs> Um, but there was one point where, and I didn't remember this until I was talking to BJ earlier today, but there was one point where Mike was up on the roof of the RV and there was a ton of people from the campground. Cause like all these people wanted to party with us cause we had this big RV. Right. So a bunch of people up there on the roof of the RV, Jesus. <laughs> Mike's yelling, pee in her butt, pee in her butt, like 147 times in a row just drunk off his ass, like practically falling off of the top of the RV. There's like, that's the level of shit show drunkenness that was going on. I think, uh, I think somebody had broken the shower. There was like, I, I remember eventually like kicking people out of there. I was like, I don't know who you are. Get the fuck out of here. Like I'm, I don't feel good. Right. <laughs> Get out of my RV. <laughs> Which wasn't my RV at all. It was like Dave and Mike's pretty much. Um, so that happened, which I was so glad I, uh, texted him earlier because I totally would have lived my whole life without remembering that that had happened. (laughs) And yeah, so we finished out that, the concert. I'm sure there was probably, oh, I think we got busted for weed too. I think security came around and took, took somebody's weed. I might be mixing up my shows, right? but they had like security that would roll through the campgrounds and I don't know. I don't know how you would manage a fucking sh- like <laughs> shit show like that. There's hundreds of thousands, well, not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of people, right? You know, camping together. But anyways, so we did the show, and then rather than going straight home, you know, because we had the free miles, we decided to go up back up around through Eastern Washington and then up through the Cascades, and did some camping and stopped at like Lake Chelan, I think it was, or maybe it was Crater Lake. I have to look at the map. I can't remember. Um, that was the first time I ever tried oysters. Uh, I out of a jar, so Ew. not the best way to taste an oyster. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And Mike was like showing me exactly how it looked like a vagina, of course, and then sticking his tongue through it. You can picture what kind of guy Mike is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we also went off roading in this RV oh, God, um, down by some river or something. And I think I think I was laying in the back, the very back where the bed was, and then all of a sudden it's just like bumping, bumping, bumping to the point where like I flip over on my stomach and I'm holding on to the mattress <laughs> on the back and it's like flying up and down. And I was like, what the fuck? And, uh, all the toilet chemical, the blue toilet oh, chemicals no. started coming out and seeping, you know, we're like trying to pick up whoever's stuff is on the ground and put it up above so it doesn't get saturated in toilet chemical. It wasn't like shit, but, but it, it was yeah, not good. And it, like, <laughs> our eyes were burning <laughs> shit. So I, I can't imagine what that looked like trying to get the deposit back for that thing. (laughs) It was fucking terrible. Um, And one, one other thing that really stands out about that to me was um, we stopped at, there's this point where you're driving back uh, across the mountains and you um, have this little scenic lookout of uh, Lake Diablo. Have you ever seen that one? It's like a really beautiful mountain lake, but it's this like preternaturally blue color. Mm-mm. It's because of the minerals. Nice. I'll show you a picture of it. it was, it's really cool. So I remember like parking the RV and getting out and just being like, this is like some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and having this very picturesque, it's like one of those few moments in time where you're like, I got to remember this and you can actually remember it, you know, nice. later on. Um, and then to, so to round the whole thing off, I'm sure I'm missing tons of stories. <laughs> Uh, in here, but to round the whole thing off, we pull back in front of my 
you know, historic neighborhood home of, you know, mild mannered, not college kid partier people. <laughs> and these guys, you know, drop us off. And then Mike fucking tears out of there on this RV and just starts doing donuts Jesus and circles Christ. on our neighbor's lawn and rips it, Rude. rips it up. And so the Pacific Northwest, it's like, even though it's June, it's like everything's constantly muddy and right. soggy there. So it just destroyed their lawn. And like, I think, uh, I think Barney was there too. Like he, he was there when we got back and he went in there and like probably broke some shit too. <laughs> like <laughs> just before they had a chance to take it back. But I remember, um, the next day, like our neighbors had, you know, little stakes up in their grass, like with taper or, oh. you know, like the little tape around it <laughs> right. with a sprinkler going to try to like save their lawn. That's so mean. I know. Total <laughs> dick move. Ah, uh, well, I'm surprised they didn't yell at you. I am too. And they had to live next to us for like a year and a half. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think I really saw any shows when I was, the four years I was living in Washington, like you and I got to go to that um, White River Snake Oh, Journey and uh, Journey and Def, Def Leppard. Leppard. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mountain View? No, that's California. Some White Shoreline? Snake thing, but I'm like, not the Shoreline. band. What? <laughs> yeah, I was like, not the band White Snake. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I I never got to see Sir Mix a lot, Aww. which is weird because he played every year. Yeah. Um, At the Royal. Yeah. I was gonna say, I guess there's a pretty horrible story, <laughs> and horrible in the sense that. I may have dri- driven while drunk. Um, Charlotte. I know. I, I had gotten a ticket because I was going down to Seattle. I was going pretty fast. It was just me and Laurie, and They Might Be Giants was playing at um, a record store, the Easy Street Records. But I didn't know there was more than one Easy Street Records, and this was before we had smartphones. And so I had, like, my map quests like print up or whatever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we get there, there's nobody in line, which I'm like, okay, well, we're a few hours early. So maybe let's just go get, go around the corner, we'll play some pool, have a drink or two, get a little drunk, but enough that we can get sober enough by the time it's time to come home. So we have a few drinks and then I'm like, let's just go check back at the record store real quick. And of course me and Laurie took these amazing pictures because there was this big Corona girl wallpaper in the mm-hmm. background. So there's pictures of me like grabbing her boobs and like trying oh, to lick her face. Oh, that's where those pictures came from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, then I had this brilliant idea that we should print them up right away. And because um, we had a digital camera, like let's go to like CVS, we'll go print them up. And then when we meet the band, we'll make them sign these. <laughs> and because <laughs> again, we're pretty drunk. Um, well, I get back to Easy Street Records. There's still not a line. Now, at this point, the show starts in about an hour. And I'm like, no, 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 something's wrong. So I go in and I, I'm kind of frustrated because we went in the first time and I had said something like, oh, nobody's lined up yet. And they just kind of looked at me like I was crazy, but didn't say anything. When I came back, I was like, OK, this is weird. There's why isn't anybody here? I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, they might be giants is playing tonight. Like, no, that's one downtown or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck? There's more than one. (laughs) So I'm like, Laurie, what do we do? Like how we should take a cab. I thought to do the responsible thing. And Laurie's like, I'm not even drunk. Like I'll drive. Now my July doesn't even have driver's license. And so (laughs) we get in the car and we drive over there and it's fine. Um, Nothing happens that's, you know, like, we were lucky. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Um, We get to watch the show, and it's amazing. And we, sure enough, we're like, sign sign here or whatever. And, like, John Linnell looks up at me, and he looks over at Flansburg, and he's like, should I sign this? Like, I don't know if this is appropriate. <laughs> and, like, and we're just like, this is great. This is great. It's hilarious. You don't think it's funny? It's funny. Um <laughs> And then, there's, nothing, there's nothing performers love more than their drunk fans making them do shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Laurie, after getting her sign, she wanted them to... Oh, if, it was like, I'll see you tonight, Casey, who her brother. And uh, and then he's like, why don't I just write, I'll see you later. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fun. You're no fun. Um, but yeah, then we had to drive home. And then by that time, Laurie was trashed, even though she hadn't drank anymore. But the booze had finally hit her. And then I was like go to Denny's for a little while. But yeah, we had to drive home and it was from Seattle and it was not a good time. Yeah. So yeah, I was 21, stupid. And luckily we didn't get in any trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, was, got a speeding ticket out of it. I'm glad I didn't get a DUI. <laughs> yeah. Never had a DUI and I have 
been in a position where I should have gotten one. Definitely. Right. A few yeah, times. I haven't either, which like, I've been pulled over once for one. He's like, where are you coming from? I was like, I know you saw me leave the bar. <laughs> um, and he's like, do you have anything to drink? I'm like, just two. I knew that I probably shouldn't have driven, uh, but I was fine enough that he kind of looked at me and I was like, and I ate dinner too. Cause I know that you have to wait 20 minutes from when you eat or drink something to get an accurate breathalyzer reading. And so he kind of looked at me, he's like, all right, you drive home real safe. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm never doing it again. And I haven't. I really, you know. Yeah, I don't do it anymore either. Well, it's so easy now with Uber. Right. Although I was, um, I was doing Uber Eats the other day because, you know, we're sick and I wanted soup. So I ordered some pho and they, they tacked on a California driver's fee and that thing didn't even pass. So like, fuck you, Uber, you piece of shit. Like... We always knew Lyft was where it's at, but these whole, um, they spent millions of dollars, right? So that they didn't have to take care of their employees, Hundreds right? Of Hundreds of millions. Are you talking about Prop 22? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, of course, passed, I guess. Or is it? No. Whatever it was, they, they got away with shit. Yeah, we didn't want it to pass and it did pass. Right. So, um, so that, but yet now they're still charging an extra charge for California. And it's like, well, you just got to make that money back, I guess. Not pay your employees but still get back that money you spent on advertising. Fuck you. I'm trying to think uh, of some philanthropic like way that I can spend my hundreds of millions of dollars that I'm about to win on mega millions. Right. So if you guys have any ideas, listeners, about, you know, charitable causes or good causes that need funding, let me know because I'm about to be rich. (laughs) Can't wait till you to buy me a house on Maui. Well, Charlotte, we're back. We did a podcast. We got out of bed. I'm going right back to bed after this. (laughs) (laughs) So let's end this on a, on a positive note. Um, What are we going to do to be excellent to each other? Make the world a slightly less shitty place. I unfollowed Trump on Twitter. I never followed him in the first place. (laughs) Oh, I did. Craig actually was even telling me today, he's like, I've never followed him, but he isn't my number one most searched <laughs> because he's like, I won't give him the benefit of following him, but I do have to see what he says. Yeah. I like to be a smart ass on, and comment on all of his shit, like comment gifts and stuff. So I've taken that out of my life and I feel like that's a good place to start. I've tried, I really tried to stop posting political things, knowing that it doesn't change anyone's mind. And usually I love arguing with people who don't agree with me, but Lately, I've just been tired and like, here's something to think about. This might be the way we can make the world a better place or slightly less shitty place. Right. There's got to be a way that we can argue, but a little bit more intelligently and a little bit basically smarter to not make people realize you're arguing with them. Right. Which just boils down to asking them questions. You know what I mean? Because people right. love to talk about what they want to talk about. And right. So if you just can continually ask them questions about what they're talking about and you do it in a smart way, that might be a way that you can get people to... I don't know if I'm smart enough. <laughs> well, but yeah, but it's, it's, this is where we start. Is we, we're like, okay, how do we do this? Because you can, you know, research what to say. You can learn techniques like That's your true. FBI te- technique guy, like that kind of thing. So maybe rather than just trying to argue people, argue with people, obviously the people who listen to this podcast are already going to agree with us. Yeah, they, <laughs> you know, we don't have a lot of Trump supporters listening in, but, but when we talk to other people, there's got to be a smarter way rather than just like butting heads. We can practice on mom. I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start. Sweet. Um, yeah. So well, that being said... If you're enjoying our show, please head over to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. We really appreciate all the engagement we get on social media. We sure really do. Really helps other people find us. We have a website. We have our episodes on YouTube. Yeah. Um, follow us on social media. If you have any funny stories, send us an email. We'll. We'll read them out loud if it's funny enough. <laughs> and we've been trying to work on our merch. We haven't been doing a great job, but we no. do have a little bit of merch available on our website, but we're gonna, about to put more up. Yeah. We're, I'm going to, as soon as my head stops pounding, I'm going to make something real cool. That's our New Year's resolution is to provide you guys with exactly what you want. I'm going to make all the stuff that I would want to buy for myself and 
allow you to purchase it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate you. You're the bread and butter that keep our show going. Uh, speaking of, to one of our patrons, Siobhan, sent me a message on Instagram today. And she's like, this joke never gets old. And it was a picture of... Um, charcuterie like <laughs> cups in mason jars and it was called jarcuterie <laughs> and I was, like, I was like I'm gonna tell Charlotte that while we're live <laughs> it's good I like it um, and fuck that word <laughs> <laughs> alright guys thanks for listening we'll be back next week with more stupid shit hopefully my brain will be a lot clearer <laughs> and uh, yeah thanks for listening thanks bye, bye.